Good morning everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've got something slightly different for you today. I'm going to be talking about what I wore on my wedding day. So I was supposed to get married originally, to, well no, originally back in June, <laughs> but obviously it got postponed to tomorrow at the time of filming. Because Boris dropped his bombshell on Halloween, we actually pulled the wedding forward a week. So I have now I've gotten married, I'm not actually wearing my wedding ring, <laughs> but I'll show you that at some point during this video. So I thought I would do a video all about what I wore on my wedding day. I'm going to start with a beauty product, so this is technically not something you would really expect to see in a video like this, but I did wear it, it's a perfume, so I wore the Coco Mademoiselle perfume from Chanel. It's a really lovely summery scent, obviously I was expecting to get married in summer. It's just really, really nice, really lovely sweet floral scent. I was thrown a little bit of a curveball on the day of my wedding, or a few days before my wedding, because my poor friend Kat, who is also my hairdresser, who I was expecting to do my hair actually woke up with the flu the day that Boris announced lockdown so obviously she couldn't leave the house for self-isolating reasons but also because she was just way too poorly to come and do like three people's hair bless her <laughs> so I ended up doing my own hair which I'm slightly nervous about because I'm not brilliant at doing hair so I just kind of did it the way that I used to do it when I used to go out on nights out a lot and I did kind of what I'd asked Kat for anyway but just my much less clever version of it. So I curled my hair all over the same way that I normally do. I'll put some pictures up here so that you can see. And I took some pieces around the crown of my head, back brushed them and put them into like a little bouffant. I couldn't cover the grips completely at the back of my hair. If Kat had been there, she would have been able to do it in a really clever way, but I can't do that. So um, we just used this just to distract from the grips that were at the back of my hair. I'll put a close up of this so that you can see it properly. The next thing that I want to talk about very quickly are the beauty treatments that I had just before the wedding. So this was also a bit of a panic. The tier three plus restrictions came into place in Nottingham and I heard that salons were going to close. So I rang up my salon in an absolute panic saying, please, 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 can you get me in tomorrow by any chance? Please, can you get me in? And they said, yes, we'll see what we can do. We'll bring you back. And they rang back in like 10 minutes and said, okay, we've booked you in and um, you're not gonna be able to have like a foot massage or anything with your pedicure and stuff like that I was like fine that's fine my only worry was that everything wouldn't be fresh on the wedding day but obviously the wedding got pulled forward so it worked out really really well in the end so what I had done was I had my nails done I had tips put on and I had this lovely almost purpley pink color but it just kind of goes with everything I really really like this I had LVL lashes done I've got mascara on today if you look at my what I wore in a week video, which was my seven kind of daily outfit ideas video, then you'll see what everything looks like straight after the, or the, the day after the appointments. And I went for HD brows, which is a treatment that I go for quite often. I really like HD brows. They basically tint them and wax them and do some clever stuff <laughs> with them. Now I'm going to talk about the makeup and it is quite similar to the makeup that I'm wearing today. I have tried to recreate it for you a little bit. So what I did probably about a month or so before the wedding, I started experimenting with makeup looks that I wanted to do. From the start, I knew that I wanted to do my own makeup on my wedding day, but I just wasn't sure what eyeshadow look to go for. So I just started testing out palettes and things about a month before. And once one day when I kind of worked out, yes, this is the look I want, I did it. And then afterwards on my phone, immediately afterwards, I made a checklist of every item that I'd used, what brush I'd applied it with. I sat by a window so that I could apply it in natural light and that meant that it looked really really nice in daylight but then also in artificial light it looks even better really. So I'm really pleased with the photos that I've seen. I haven't got all my photos yet. I will probably do a video all about how I actually achieved my wedding makeup look. Unfortunately I've deleted stupidly that list that I had of all the products that I used but I've got a rough idea. That is one video that will be on its way for you, but I'll quickly show you the eyeshadow palette that I used. So this is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Walk of No Shame palette. And I also used um, a black eyeshadow as well, which was Carbon from MAC. And that was everything that I used on my eyes. I don't think I've got a close up of the makeup from the actual day, although my friend did take a selfie, but I don't, I don't think you can really see my eye makeup in there. But if I can find a picture of my eyeshadow, or my makeup in general, I will pop it on the screen for you. 
But next, I'm gonna show you my shoes. So my shoes are from Quiz, and it took me literally like two and a half years to find the right shoes. <laughs> I'm so, so fussy anyway when it comes to any clothes or accessories. And when it's for your wedding day, a day where you're going to be photographed, these photos are gonna be in people's photo albums and on their walls and your own walls for years and years to come. You wanna get everything right. Doesn't really matter about the shoes because no one sees them anyway if you go for a long dress, <laughs> which I did, but I am really, really pleased with what I eventually got. It took me so long to find them and I wanted something that I could wear again as well. So this is what I went for. So this is a really lovely strappy sandal from Quiz and they were about 20 pounds, I think. So I was really, really pleased that I managed to find these shoes in the end and not break the bank as well, because most of the shoes that I found were like Ted Baker or John Lewis, places like that, quite premium price points, but this was perfect. I'm really, really pleased with the shoes and they were really comfortable as well. They were so, so good. I didn't get any pain all day. I think when I um, went to bed, I was quite happy to take them off, but um, I didn't, I wasn't like, crippled all day. <laughs> if you are looking for shoes for your wedding day, it's a really good idea to go for something with lots of straps because they're just so much easier to walk in. I think a lot of wedding shoes are kind of like a court shoe with a pointy toe and I think those are honestly the most uncomfortable shoes, but I do understand why people fall in love with them. And now I'm going to show you my jewellery that I wore on the day, so I'm going to leave my engagement ring and my wedding ring till last because obviously that's the most exciting bit but let's show you the Ted Baker bracelet first so this was a bit of a last minute addition to my jewellery so my friend Julie bought me this for a birthday or Christmas can't remember when exactly but I really really love it it's a really nice rose gold Ted Baker cuff I think it's really elegant I love it wasn't really going to wear it on my wedding day because I was going for silver jewelry but my wedding ring as you will see in a moment is rose gold so just as I was packing to go to the B&B &B the night before I thought I'm gonna take that <laughs> I think it's gonna tie everything in a lot better the wedding band isn't gonna look so out of place and I'm really glad that I did wear it in the end so thank you Julie for that my jewelry is really where I went for the more luxury statement pieces I was quite budget on my dress and veil and all of that sort of thing my shoes as you saw were only 20 pounds but I decided to really treat myself when it came to my wedding jewelry so I have a very exciting Tiffany box. I think this colour blue just sends most women's hearts a fluttering. And I went for the sterling silver return to Tiffany heart necklace with the little key. I bought this a long time ago and I haven't let myself wear it. I think I have one video where I put it on just because I thought it would just finish off an outfit but I haven't worn it out of the house before until the wedding. Now obviously I can wear it as much as I want but I wanted to make sure that it was in the best condition and just that it always reminded me of my wedding day as well. So I thought that really complemented the dress really well. Obviously you'll see what the dress looks like towards the end of the video. I wanted to save the most exciting bit till last. Then I have a pair of Monica Vinader diamond earrings that I bought in a Black Friday sale a year ago or maybe two years ago. Again, I didn't really let myself wear them. Oh, that's a lie actually. So on our original wedding day, which would have been the 25th of June, I decided to wear the jewellery that I was going to wear on my wedding day. So I did wear, obviously I didn't wear my wedding ring, <laughs> but I did wear these studs and the Tiffany necklace that you just saw. So I don't think you'll be able to see these on camera, but I'll pop a close up of them so that you can see. And they are just this really, really lovely statement waterfall effect stud. And they don't really look anything that special in the daytime, but when the artificial light shines on them, they just look really, really stunning and sparkly. They're just gorgeous. They're part of Monica Vinader's Reva collection, which I believe is the collection that is meant to make diamonds every day and more accessible. And then I also wore my engagement ring. I wore it on my right hand, obviously because I needed to keep my left hand free. I will do a close-up, but annoyingly, um, because it's aquamarine, it does go quite cloudy. I did try and take it into the jewellers to go and get it cleaned up before the wedding, but they were like, no, we're not doing that because of COVID. And I was like, I'm asking you to clean it. <laughs> it does look a little bit dull at the moment. The diamonds never really look dull. They are always really beautiful and sparkly. The aquamarine just needs a cleaning every so often, but unfortunately I can't do that at the minute. But it is a really, really beautiful ring. It's exactly what I wanted. It's a trio of stones, which is what I always wanted. And I really like the fact that the aquamarine is in there so that there's something just a little bit different about it. It's not just diamonds. It's not just exactly the same as every other engagement ring that I've seen. It's a really, really beautiful ring. I believe it's um, white gold. And then this is my wedding ring. So I went for a rose 
rose gold wedding ring, which was quite hard to find. A lot of jewelers didn't do them or they wanted to charge an absolute fortune to make them. But me and my mum went into a jewelers in Nottingham, just a local store, and they didn't charge me a great deal. I think they charged me about 200 pounds or just over. It's just really, really beautiful. And it's curved so that I can slot my engagement ring straight next to it. I didn't want it like cut around it because I thought, well, then I can't wear it on its own. You could turn it around so it just looks like a traditional straight wedding band. But I like the, um, I like the kind of wave effect as well. So yeah, really, really pleased with my wedding ring. Really happy that I can finally wear it. And now we come to obviously the most exciting part of the video, which is my wedding dress reveal. I will show you a close up of what it looks like, how the light catches it. I might pop my um, photography light on so that you can really see how the sequins and things sparkle. I'll show you the dress now. I'll pop some pictures up on the side as well. And let's see what you think. Are you ready? Wedding dress. You can't really see it because <laughs> I've got a white background. But let's come a little bit closer to the camera. So it's got this lovely sweetheart neckline and then hopefully you can see, I think you can, you can see this lovely beading and then it's got a mix of white and, well, ivory and kind of silvery and transparent beading and sequins and it's just really, really stunning. When the light catches it, it just looks gorgeous and then it comes into the, oh, it's got these kind of floral designs on the embroidery as well. The skirt, when it's on the hanger, it looks very puffy and I didn't actually want to try it on <laughs> because I thought, oh no, it's too princessy, it's too ball gown, don't like it. It, but it's actually A-line. It's actually a really nice, smooth, streamlined skirt and it looks really, really flattering on. So it is a really, really gorgeous dress. It's got these lovely buttons down the back as well. I actually got it for £400. So this dress, if you were to buy it at full price, this would be probably double or, no, it would be more than double that. So if you are newly engaged and you're really worried about how much everything costs, don't worry, you can find ways to kind of make your dream come true without, that was really cheesy, um, without, <laughs> without having to spend loads and loads of money. I went to a shop that was closing down, so that was why the dress was so discounted, but still really, really amazing quality. So really, really pleased with my wedding dress. However, in most of the wedding photos, you won't actually see that dress looking that way because I am wearing my bolero in it. So most boleros, I suppose, are kind of like a jacket style just to keep you warm. But this was something that I incorporated because I just wanted a slightly different style of dress. I really love how that dress looks on its own, but I extra love it when it's got this on. So this is like a t-shirt style bolero. So it buttons up at the back. That's what it looks like from the back. And then at the front, it's like a T, so it's got these little short sleeves and this kind of crew neck neckline, which I really, really love. It's such good quality, and I got it from Etsy for around the £70 mark, I think. It's got these really nice button details, and it just went so well with the dress because it's got similar floral detail on in the lace and also the little translucent sequins as well. So it just fits so well with the dress. I took it off um, just before we went to cut the cake and eat the meal. And um, my friend Brooke, who was there said, oh, I had absolutely no idea that that was separate. <laughs> like it goes so, so well with the dress. And I was like, that is exactly what I was going for. It wasn't meant to look like a bolero. And when I call it a bolero, I'm kind of like, <laughs> I feel like there should be a better name for it because it's not, like a bolero to me is like one of those like little cape things that you put on. Whereas this I think is just, it's like a topper for the dress. And yeah, I absolutely love that. So when I got engaged, there was a lot of things that I wasn't sure about. I didn't know what kind of theme I wanted. I didn't know um, exactly what sort of dress I wanted. But the one thing that I knew for certain that I wanted, I knew this all my life, long before getting engaged, was that I wanted a veil. So I also got this from Etsy and it's just gorgeous. It's got these little tiny gems on it just scattered around and it's like a two tier veil. Yeah, it's a really gorgeous veil. So it's um, kind of fingertip length here, I suppose, or elbow length or something. And then it goes floor length at the end. Obviously I can't show you here, but I will pop some pictures up of me wearing it. This has also got some little floral details on. So even though I got the dress from a bridal boutique, I got the bolero from an Etsy shop and I got the veil from a different Etsy shop, everything goes together so well. And that was by accident really. So yeah, so I was really, really pleased with everything that I wore on my wedding day, especially 
the beautiful dress and the bolero and the veil. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it's slightly different. I kind of thought, well, it is still fashion-y, so I'm gonna put it on my channel, but it was a slightly indulgent video because I just wanted to show you everything that I wore on my wedding day. I thought you might be interested to see. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video, which will be on Wednesday morning. No, Wednesday evening. I'm now uploading at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays and continuing to upload at 9 a.m. on Sunday, so do make sure that you're subscribed, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!